the town branch sewer that cuts through here that we're pretty much standing right on top of, uh, it's the largest sewer in Springfield. And when it fills to capacity, uh, it starts coming out of the inlets and the, and the manholes. So this underground detention that's here, storage, not only does the system now have to fill the existing pipe to capacity, now it's got to fill you know, all of these other pipes that were just put in, this almost half mile pipes here that were put in. So the system was made with 60 inch pipe and fittings. It holds up to 341,000 gallons of water and storage right underneath the park behind me, or about 45,000 cubic feet of storage. Um, so whenever those big rain events happen and it's able to take on all that extra water and, and kind of wait for it to settle out and to move into back into the sewer and flow out from there. Where you have old alleys and old buildings and you get into putting in a pipe system like we have behind us, you run into uh, the surprises you knew about and the surprises that you didn't know about. It had a, a wool factory, um, it had a rubber factory, it had a theater, it had a seven-story hotel in the corner, and all this had been demolished. And basically when we took over the site, when the city bought the site, the only thing that was remaining was the Y itself, and that had since been demolished about a year or two ago. Old utilities that were no longer in service that were left in place, uh, parts of basements that were only cut down maybe a couple of feet, and, uh, and, and debris that was used to fill the holes way back when. Because of contaminated soil in the property, um, they had a clay liner that went in all around and enveloped the, the whole system. So as we would dig down to our elevation, we would put a sand bed down and then put our clay liner down and then come up with the pipe and all our, our backfill. And then when we got to a foot above the pipe, then we would wrap the liner over the top of it, seal everything up, and then backfill with dirt to the grade. Well, so we had to uh, look at you know a way to incorporate the detention, but not not completely restrict what could be done you know after the fact with the development. So we were looking at you know the depth of the system, the size of the system, making sure it would it wasn't going to completely restrict what we could do later with this with this particular site. The area is up for redevelopment in some fashion, and whether that redevelopment takes the guise of a green space downtown or another building or a combination of both. Actually, if, if another building does go up, it would be a combination of both because nothing can be built on our uh, pipe system back here. People don't usually get too excited when you put pipes underground because you can't see them. Uh, so this has pipes underground and it has a nice roadway along with it too. So um, that I think that helped to secure funding for the underground portion because there was a, another element to it that you know is very visible to the public. So one of the really nice things about this, this project is it was, a, although smaller in scope than maybe what's needed for the entire city, it's a really good step in the right direction so that maybe that next big rain event that comes in will be mitigated and there won't be any problems on the surface. It does help locally with some, some key spots adjacent to this project, but to solve the problem, it's gonna take a lot more work and a lot more money to get to that point. It was on time. We were done before they were done at the governor's mansion. We were done before they were done across the street.